All right, how's it going guys? Uh, this is gonna be more of a casual video, but we're gonna be talking about um, how to make materials and sort of the modern trends in uh, motion graphics. We're gonna be doing all of this totally procedurally. Uh, so let's get into that. First, I wanna let you guys know that my Black Friday sale is still going. Uh, so you can get real-time materials, my shading course, or my motion graphics course, all 50% off right now using the code D350 on Blender Market. If you wanna check that out, it is linked in the description. Um, but with that being said, let's get into it. Uh, so collected a couple of things here that I find uh, very common in you know, modern motion graphics. And so I'm going to kind of point out three things and then we're going to create it in Blender. So one of them is, uh, can we zoom in? We can. It's kind of having like this rough surface and then these speckled shiny stuff. And that's just super, super useful. Uh, so we are going to make one of those. Another one is kind of distributing at large scale the kind of color differences. So we can see that and you know, noise texture, playing with some color, but I'm gonna show you how to really take that, have some fun with it. Um, also, also we have just super simple materials with just something interesting, in this case, these bumps. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing with motion graphics is the materials aren't meant to be the standout thing. They, they are meant to complement the weird whatever objects that's happening. And so that's why they tend to be very simple. Um, you know, you even have just like some simple one color leather, but you can see right here, just very simple material with a little bit of bumping going on. Um, and, you know, gradients are huge. Uh, so something like this, you can see this beautiful gradient here, but it's a little different, it's not just a basic gradient. We have speckles on top. Um, and you know, kind of getting yourself in the mindset, you know, right here you would say, hey, maybe that's surface imperfection, but they're loud surface imperfections, but they're still simple. They allow you to enjoy the shape, what's happening. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create three materials that really encapsulate the ideas of what's kind of trending in modern motion graphics. You can see it all right here. Um, this is Pinterest. Highly recommend using Pinterest. See these gradients right here. Uh, so I highly recommend using uh, Pinterest. Pinterest for kind of your R and D for you know materials, concept styles. Uh, Pinterest is really underrated. So okay, so we have uh, have this scene, but really just pull in any object you want if you plan on following along. Um, but this is the scene. Uh, can't give the project file out on Patreon because these are not my models. I'll link in the description the pack that I got. Uh, but I wanted to set something up that's also very trendy looking. So the first one we're going to do is let's go ahead and make the speckled shiny with rough material. So we're just going to head straight into shading and create that. Um, so we're just going to have, we have our basic principled shader. So we have our basic principled shader. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get another one and get a mix shader so that we can connect the two of them. And here's what we're gonna do. One of them is just gonna be a nice blue. I'm gonna bring that factor over, that's that's what we're dealing with. Let's bring the factor over to this one right here. Let's make it metallic and uh, let's make it nice and gold. And roughness definitely needs to come down. So we need to just make something simple that allows these two to speak to each other. So we're gonna get a color ramp and a Voronoi. And then with that node wrangler, we're gonna get a mapping and a texture coordinate. Plug the color, because it's just gonna be flat, and then plug that into the factor. So now we have this number going on. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to, actually we're gonna use the uh, constant so that we just get a hard edge. And we'll do something like this, and then just scale it up. And we've now created that. And then we do wanna create a little bit of interest in the roughness of the blue material. And that is always super easy to do. Uh, that is a white noise. We need just a noise texture. Again, super easy to do. Uh, we plug the vector there, factor. And then what you can do is you can take this and then crunch it in, crunch it in detail to 12, 
roughness all the way up. So now it's interesting if we can look at it in cycles, we now have a really cool material. And if that's like too reflective, too shiny, you can bring that black portion up to meet it. But there we go, we already have one interesting material already. Again, keeping it simple. When you're designing motion graphics, um, don't design to hide what you're doing. So a lot of beginners would go, well, I wanna change this more because it's obviously a Voronoi texture and I don't want other CG artists to just be able to immediately know how I made something. Forget about that. Um, when you're making motion graphics, you're making, you know, motion graphics for people who aren't Blender users. Everyone's not a Blender user. Just make concepts. We want speckles on a rough surface. Voronoi is the answer for that. Don't worry about people recognizing it. That is not a bad thing. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and create the one where it's these the big, big gradients. And so how do we make big gradients? And we're also going to make another gradient. We're going to put gold and then a beautiful color here, gold, beautiful color. That's, that's the idea. So we're going to go to the material preview. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a color ramp and I'm going to pick three colors that I think would be really nice in the scene. So I'm going to go with a red, that's really kind of an orange, blue, and probably purple. So we're going to make this more on the red side. Okay, so now we have our gradient and then simply noise texture. Your noise texture is really your best friend when making simple materials. And that's what we're doing here. We're just making simple materials, simple concepts. So let's crunch this in, crunch this in, and then scale this very far out till you get something like this. And then I'd bring that roughness down to kind of make it nice and slimy and interesting looking. And then you can go ahead and try to expound on what you have, doing something like this. And I want this to be purple. All right, cool, so we have that. And you can even bring this bigger now you have something interesting. And if you want to randomize that, like I don't like the position of where the colors are, flip it over to 4D and then just choose from there. All right, that's nice. Now, let's go ahead and create the gold side, which will complement this here. So what we can of course do is duplicate that. Again, getting that mix shader. You're gonna be using a lot of mixed shaders with these MoGraph style um, materials. That's just because they help. And then make that same kind of gold material, metallic, and then that roughness, keep it down. So already this is like super pretty. So you have this side, you have the gold side, and you can actually mix them together to get something beautiful. But what I'm gonna do is get a gradient on this. So we're gonna plug that there, get a gradient node, our gradient texture, and then we'll set this whole thing up here. And there we have it. And then what you can do is just rotate where this gradient is going to show up. And then maybe I'll rotate a little bit. So now we have that. So if we look at it in cycles, it's a beautiful material. And what I'd like to do is basically if you bring this white portion all the way down to black, actually no, the opposite one. If you take the black portion, bring it all the way to white, it's all gold. And so I want to mix some gold into this section here. And so if I just bring that up, it mixes it and it's subtle, but it's beautiful. So now you have this material. And then of course we can go back and edit how this material looks. So it's really cool. Now, last one is the one with kind of the loud surface imperfections, which are just like not subtle surface imperfections. That's kind of the whole idea here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of bring this down to a kind of a mid gray. We're gonna get a color ramp and let's go back to material preview. We're gonna get a bump. And this material, we're gonna actually have a little bit more in depth mess with bump, because these don't have bump, we do wanna you know, tackle that idea. So we're gonna get a Voronoi texture, and then hit Control T, and we're gonna use distance this time, because distance is gonna actually give you kind of a gradient, it's gonna let you dig into the material. 
I'm going to go to distance to edge, which gives you this kind of a crackling rock look. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the color ramp. So now we have this right here, but it's very, so, but it's very straight and not cool looking. And so what we can do is here on the vector line, we can put a uh, noise texture here and then a mix RGB. And this is a fun process I've been doing for years to add detail into a material. So here's what happens. So this is how it looks originally. We want to make it look less planar. So what I can do is start to introduce with this mix some of that noise texture. You can see how it distorts it, but we can also do is bring that detail to 12. And you can bring that roughness up too, but really the detail to 12 kind of does what, what we're looking to do. Then you bring that scale up. And then we need to do one more thing. So you can bring that strength down, strength up, and let's see how it looks in cycles right now. So we have that, but what I want to do is introduce something here. This is too smooth. Uh, it doesn't complement these big gashes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the bump node and we're going to get a, uh, we're just going to get this noise texture here. And I'm going to plug the mapping. This is kind of quick and dirty, but that's usually what works. So I'm bringing my distance to 0.1 and that's going to make it look a lot more subtle and then bring that scale up and bring that strength down. And now we're going to have a, a material with a bit more subtlety. So now look at that. And then just, just for the heck of it, we're going to put one more gradient. Uh, gradients pretty much always work with MoGraph. So plug this here and to kind of finalize this material, we're going to get a nice blue to complement the rest of the scene here. And then we can just kind of B spline it to make it really smooth. Bring that in. And then bring that location. And there we have it. And then this back material, let's just make it gold. And in conclusion, these are the materials we made that very much complement modern MoGraph styles. And the reason I picked these three specifically is you can take the concepts that you learned from this and make like hundreds of other materials. So you can really, really just make really cool things. And on a side promo note, um, the basics category in real-time materials is really, really good for this. And the abstract materials are very, very good for this as well. Um, and then you can also go into metallic and have a little bit of fun with those as well. Paint, all that. Uh, so if, if you do have real-time materials, a lot of these kind of styles are already available to you. Like the, uh, the speckles right there, speckles right there, that kind of thing. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff. If you're into making motion graphics, I have a lot of really cool videos on that. Uh, don't forget, Black Friday sale. Use that code D350 on Blender Market. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial.